Pterodactyl here, and look what I bought, a Bolin's Ride Master. You're probably thinking to yourself, what the heck is that? That's what I said when I saw it. What the heck is that? This is Field Tractor Performance with Garden Tractor Economy. That's how they marketed it. There's all kind of attachments and stuff that mount to this. A greater blade, a spike harrow, a disc, a cart, snow plow, all kinds of stuff. So you mount your attachment to here, and that's how you can raise and lower your attachment. Isn't that neat? So I saw these on an online auction. And there were nine of them they were auctioning off. So I had nine to pick from and knew nothing about these things. So Elkskins came in and said, I want to go to a website. And for those of you who don't know who Elkskins is, he's their human shop rag. So Elkskins came in and he said, I know a website where I could probably find a manual on this. And sure enough, he did. So we started looking at the manual and reading about it because I had like six hours before the auction had ended so I could figure out which one I wanted. So out of the nine that were there, eight of them had the single speed transmission on it. They were the older ones. And then at a later date, which we'll go over later when we look at the manual, they made a two speed transmission with the number two thread gear they called it or something like that some kind of thread gear so it went a little faster than the single speed early ones and then they made another one that had uh, a dual speed trans that had a number three thread gear or something the way it's called we'll look in the manual again i'll show you what the exact verbiage is and that one went even faster yet so this one is the one that goes the fastest. This will go up to six miles an hour. And you're probably thinking, ooh, Carol, you're not breaking any land speed records going six miles an hour. You're right. But the single speed ones only go about three miles an hour. So we're doubling the speed. So I thought I'm gonna bid on this one. So I'm looking at the other ones and some of them were missing a lot of parts. Some of them didn't have an engine pulley. So it's like, well, I gotta have an engine pulley. Where am I gonna find an engine pulley? You know why? Because this engine pulley is kind of special. And you're looking at that engine pulley right now and you're thinking, what's so special about that? You can just go to Granger or somewhere and get a, a pulley like that that's got three belts in it. Well, this one is special because on the ends of this pulley are friction discs. And what these friction discs do is make it go in reverse. So the way this thing works is, it's got a lever right here. This thing works kind of like a Troy built, an old Troy built tiller, like a horse. So this is neutral, this is your lever. So this is in neutral. So when you pick this up and push it forward, it drops the engine down and tightens the belts and makes this tractor move. See, this is your transmission. So then this makes it move, it starts spinning this. And when you wanna go in reverse, you pull on this lever which pulls on this cable, and when you pull it back, it pulls the engine up. And these friction discs that are on the edges of this engine pulley rub on these angled parts of this drive pulley. And that's what makes it go in reverse. So if I would have bought one of those other ones I seen that was missing the engine pulley, you know, where am I gonna find an engine pulley with them friction discs? Might be difficult to find. Or if I did find it, I might spend a lot of money. You know, and then if I spent a lot of money buying that initial one that was missing all these parts, you know, now I'm spending more and more money. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna concentrate on this one. Cause some of them had flat tires and dry rotted tires and Looked like some of the engine stuff was missing. So I thought, you know, this would be the best one to try to grab. 
because all of it's there. It looks like somebody started to restore it already. The motor turns free. It looks like it's got a new coil wire on it. The gas tank is clean, the gas is old. So in a little bit here, we're gonna try to start it to see if it'll start. So looking at it, to get it going, it doesn't seem like it needs a lot. Three new belts, which I already ordered. I figured out what size they were, half inch by 24. I gotta fix this cable, this drive cable because this isn't the way it worked. There's a carriage bolt that goes in here that they drilled a hole in. And then the cable slips through the hole that's drilled in the carriage bolt. And you slip the cable through that hole and you tighten up the nut and that's what holds the cable. And then see this is slotted a little bit for adjustment. So I can make that. And then here, there's a spring that's supposed to hook in this hole. And that spring goes from here to this bracket back here. So that way when you put it in forward, that spring helps pull the motor down and make the belts tight. So I'll have to take care of all that. So luckily, Elkskin's found that manual and it shows everything. This part looks like it's new, like it's been replaced. These are brand new tires. Look at the nubs are still on them. They're not exactly the right size tires because when you steer it, these uh, ag treads kind of hit here. And everything is loose. You know, these bolts are all loose. I found a lot of other loose bolts. Like they had taken it apart to paint stuff and put it back together. I wish it had an attachment, like a greater blade. But I missed out on that because I didn't know what I was doing. I could have got a greater blade. I seen one of the greater blades on that auction went for 30 bucks. I probably would have had to pay a little more because that whoever was bidding the $30 on it probably would have went in a bidding war with me, so I might have had to pay 50. Mm. This little pulley here is froze where the cable slides through. That's no big deal, I can fix that. It's all minor stuff. The throttle, here's your throttle. I can fix that, at least it's there. And then this is how you killed it. You push this tab down to ground. So there's a wire that ran underneath here, came out of here because there's a rubber grommet, and then it ran down to the ignition here on this Wisconsin. There's an ignition tab here. And then this is the original kill for the Wisconsin. You know, you would touch this to here and that would kill it. So all I gotta do is run a new wire. This is about a six horsepower Wisconsin engine on this thing. So when I saw this, I thought, man, I gotta have this. What else does it do? You can adjust these back here. There's a couple of big square heads under here that you loosen and you can move the wheels out or in. So if you're doing something on a hill or a slope and you need a little more stability, you can kick those out and you can adjust them. Here, see, you can adjust the wheels. And in this hitch, I didn't see anything in any of the information I found online about of having a hitch. This looks like it was uh, homemade. So somebody made a hitch for it. You can adjust the seat. There's three different positions. Plus there's other square holes in here for a carriage bolt so you can even move it back a little further. It's got this big spring, one single spring for your attachment. So when you got weight on it, you know, it helps to pull it down. You know, you can feel the spring is pulling against it now, but if you had weight on there, it'd pull it down. And if you notice, they put a pin on the other side. So if you had something that was real heavy, you could always add another spring to help and stretch it down to this point here. And then the whole front end pivots to steer. So this thing's pretty cool. And they offered a light kit, which came with a Cyclops light, which means one light, like a Cyclops. Had the light in the middle of his head, or the eyeball. So how that works is, 
you bought this kit and it came with a generator. So I'm sure it had a starter generator. Again, I went online, I couldn't find any of these that people had that had the light kit on it. So the light kit would have probably mounted over here because there's some bolts here. So I could probably fab up a bracket and put a starter generator over here and find a pulley to go on here with a belt so I could spin that starter generator. Then I would have electric start, wouldn't have to wrap a rope around it to start it. And I could run a light, I could put a Cyclops light somewhere and mount it here. Because I couldn't, again, couldn't find out where the light mounted. I don't know if it mounted to the engine, it mounted to here, or if it mounted up here. It said it had an implement light, so you could shine it on your implement. So if you're plowing or harrowing or, you know, a harrow, H-A-R-R-O-W. And I think it had a tail light. So I don't think I did too bad on this one, considering the shape it's in. And that 99.9% .9 of it is there, and I think it'll start. I think I can get this thing started. Now you're all thinking, what'd you pay for it, Carol? Carol, what'd you pay for it? What'd you pay for it? $375, that's what I paid for it. Okay, you can get off the floor and get back on your seat now, and you can stick your tongue back in your mouth. 375. I don't think I did too bad. Considering some of them ones that were missing parts went for $200 or more. So for a little bit, 100 or some dollars more I paid than those ones, I got one complete. So let's go over to the computer and look at that manual that the human shop rag found, Elkskins. So this is the manual that Elkskins found. And that gave us a lot of valuable information so I knew which one to, to bid on. And then here's these models, these models and types, 35AB. And then somebody wrote in there on 10, the years. So this is the one I have, the 35AB3. From 53 to 56, they're saying that one was, was manufactured. Now I didn't write that in there, somebody else did. So if any of you out there know more than that, you can correct whoever manual this is, but that's what it said. And look at that guy here, look at it, he's looking tough. He's got his arms all folded, he's like, man, Bowling's husky, man. Okay, so let's get to where the transmission is. Transmission. So we can read about it. So this is what we found. The Type 35 AB02 and AB03, which were about the other eight that were there, Ride Master tractors are designed with a single speed transmission, having a speed range of one and a half to three miles an hour. Woo! Fast paced walk right there. The 35AB201 has a double speed transmission with two thread gears, developing top ground speeds of two and four miles per hour. Woo! So the thread gears, from what I gather, have something to do with the way it's geared for the speed. It doesn't mean it has like two gears that you change. It has something to do with the, the type of gears that's inside the transmission. Like a worm gear, I'm thinking. And the type 35AB301, which is the one I have, also has a two-speed transmission with three thread gears, developing top ground speeds of three and six miles per hour. Whoa. So yeah, I wanted the fastest one out of them. Cause I want to be able to, you know, do burnouts and yeah, like you can do a burnout with this. Six horsepower air cooled single cylinder engine. Drives the two front wheels through V belt and a worm gear transmission. So that's what I think that means. If I'm wrong, correct me, but thread gears, because there's only a double speed transmission and I'll show you where that lever is to shift it, because I had a hard time figuring out how this thing works. And there wasn't a lot of information, clear information online about it. So there's a lever. 
Tells you how it goes forward or reverse, which I already went over with you. All the maintenance, all the adjustments. So I got everything here. So if I'm stumped on something, I can come right to this and kind of help me figure it out. There's the cable. There's that spring I showed you that was missing. Here's the cable. How to adjust the steering. See, there's our throttle and our kill switch over here. And you can see the wire going through that hole, like I said. Transmission, side views, blah, 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 blah. See, here's that spring and stuff and all the adjustment for that. It's sideways. There's that pulley with the friction discs. Unless somebody knows where you can get them friction discs. But I already got them. I didn't buy the ones with the missing pulleys. There's some more. Pretty basic and simple, isn't it? That's how they should make stuff now instead of making it all complicated. Look at this thing is like 60 some years old, still around. And this new crap, they want to fangle it all up like it's a car, it's a lawnmower, not the space shuttle. Just make it simple. All you gotta do is go out, hit the key and cut grass. I don't even know why you need a key. So here's some of the implements. There's a disc harrow, spike harrow, Mold bore plow, there was one of them there that had the plow on it. A row seeder, cultivator, disc plow, there's a snow plow which had a frame, I'm sure that went underneath. That'd be nice to have, and the grater blade, that's what I wanted, the grater blade. And then I saw another one that had a dump cart in the back. Let's go back to where it was talking about the generator. Here's all the implements. So right here, lighting kit. Includes Cyclops Eye. Remember I told you about that? It's kind of creepy. Cyclops Eye. Headlamp. Utility lamp. Okay, so that's like some kind of, probably a removable lamp where you can move it around like a flashlight. Generator and mounting bracket and wiring. So that's kind of cool, utility lamp. So maybe I can rig something up where I can have a removable light that you can move around that would be on a cord. And of course, I'll put some kind of uh, little tail light on it too. You want some kind of tail light in case you're driving it down the road because this is like a farm vehicle. If I put a sm slow moving triangle on it, I could drive it home. <laughs> it might take me a while, six miles an hour, but hey, I got nothing but time. No, not really. I ain't got no time. So let's go back to the Ride Master. Because I was going to show you where the shifter is. So here's the shifter. Here's the shifter for the two-speed trans. Right here. So once we get this thing, get the belts on it and get it running, we'll see how this two-speed trans thing works. So isn't that cool, huh? That's kind of dangerous where they got that thing stuck in there, but I'm sure you got to come to a complete stop When you want to change it because this is where you put your feet way up here you Got a bad hip you ain't riding on this thing So yeah, this is kind of cool Then you can reach down and change your gear Raise and lower your implement But everything's loose, like I said. This is loose. Here's some sprays and washers and a snap ring, which I'm sure are to hold the steering wheel down. But the steering wheel's in nice shape and ain't all cracked and broken. So I think with a little sandblasting and a little TLC, and I can get this thing going without too much trouble and money. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but I think it's cool. So let's do this. Let me pop this off, get some carb spray, and see if this thing will lick off. Because I just got it, like I said. I haven't even really messed with it. I said, hey, Mr. Cameraman, I had to call him up. He was at home, I think he was eating something. Yeah, what do you want? I said, you need to get down here, and we gotta film this real quick-like. I'll be right there. And here we are, filming it real quick-like. 
And as always, the first thing you need to do is make sure it's got oil in it. So I got my eight point socket, because those fit good on these square heads. In case you didn't know that, get yourself a set of eight point sockets. Instead of using a crescent wrench with two flats, now you got four eight point sockets. You can get a whole set of them. I got them. All right, enough of that. Oh yeah, there's oil in it. Looks pretty clean. Yeah. All right, got dinosaur syrup in it. All right, let's get some car spray. See if she'll lick off. So I got a good feeling about this Ride Master. Because like I said, it looked like somebody had already started to do a restoration on it. And I'm sure one of the things they did was make sure that this engine ran. So I got a pretty good feeling that it's going to probably start. It ain't going to start and run because that gas, the little bit of gas that's in there is real old and it smells funky. So I think if I clean the carburetor and put fresh gas in it, I could probably get it running. So I'll spray some carb spray in there and put the choke on. Let's see what happens. Fingers crossed. Woo! Woo! Should have been a little faster with the carbon spray, but heck, I was excited. All right, 10 minutes of putting the rope on. exhaust on it because I don't like the way this one is. I think I'm going to make something special. You'll see. I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to give it away right now. And start fixing up some of this stuff. So, subscribe to this YouTube channel, Tarot Fixes All. Go to our web store, get some tarot apparel. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram with your ride masters. Come on, you guys with the single speed, come on. Pick it up. Double speed and triple speed are beating you. And as always, there's your dinner. Woo! Auction Ride Master! Man, this thing's gonna be cool. Tune in for part two and I'll be driving this thing. Yeah! Woo! Ride Master, woo!